All right. Hello. I'm Kobe Kushner. I'm an analyst here at Red Cloud Securities. Thank you to Pear Tree for sponsoring this session. We're about to hear uh, from Gareth Thomas of West Haven Gold Corp. This is a gold silver explorer that's advancing four projects in the Spences Bridge Gold Belt in southern BC, where they were a first mover. They had an incredible discovery called the South Zone at their Shovel Nose property. And they recently put out a maiden resource that cracked over a million ounces, and they're now looking to grow it. Uh, Gareth, you got about 15 minutes, which will follow with five minutes of Q&A. Viewers, feel free to ask your questions at any time. Take it away. Thank you, Kobe. As mentioned, my name is Gareth Thomas. I'm the president and CEO of West Haven Gold Corp. And today I'm going to be talking about the Spences Bridge Gold Belt and the district scale opportunity in southwestern British Columbia. I will be making some forward-looking statements, so please keep that in mind through the duration of the presentation. The late 2018, West Haven made a high-grade gold discovery in its south zone on our shovel nose project, where you see we intercepted 17.7 meters at 24 and a half grams per ton gold, about 107 grams per ton silver. We followed it up every year with more high-grade intercepts, and uh, just recently announced last week we drilled eight meters of 20 grams per ton gold in a new zone in our vein zone two. And that also included 3.13 meters of 45 grams per ton gold. We are uh, currently following that up as we speak. We have a drill turning at our FMN zone and we'll be moving shortly to follow up on this uh, very interesting, uh, exciting gold intercept and will be uh, remains wide open to the Northwest. So very excited about that. And uh, we've uh, done some good work de-risking this project as we announced our initial maiden resource here in early January, where we uh, had 841,000 indicated ounces at 2.47 grams per ton gold equivalent and 277,000 inferred ounces at just under a gram gold equivalent, which equates to about 1.1 million ounces of gold in both categories. So very exciting, a very good start there. And we are working towards uh, another resource due on this FMN zone that we're currently working on. As mentioned, district scale potential here. You'll see the Spences Bridge Gold Belt on the other uh, left-hand side of your screen there. It's about 150 kilometer long Cretaceous volcanic gold belt. And we have uh, four properties, 100% owned, covering about 37,000 hectares I'll be talking mainly about shovel nose today, but we will be working all four of our projects this year and uh, we'll keep you up to speed on that as well. And another uh, big thing here, uh, share, insiders own about 25% of the shares uh, outstanding. A bit about the share structure here, as mentioned, we're very aligned with our shareholders. Uh, shares outstanding, a little over 126 million, fully diluted, uh, 147, 147 million. And uh, we're seeing about a market cap of about 50 million today. Uh, we think this is a very good opportunity for, for people to get involved here. And uh, cash of about 3 million. And we have an, an additional about 2 million coming in from our mineral exploration tax credit. So uh, very well financed for uh, the next while. And we're uh, drilling, drilling, drilling. That's our uh, plan here for this year. And we recently had uh, coverage, analyst coverage from both Raymond James and uh, Red Cloud. And we are listed, our warrants are listed under the symbol WHN.WT. A little bit more about the uh, Spences Bridge Gold Belt here with the district scale potential. As you see there uh, on the right of your screen, more zoomed in, you'll see our shovel nose, our flagship shovel nose property, which is over 17,000 hectares alone. We have our Prospect Valley to the northwest there, about 10,000 hectare property, Skunka Creek and Skunka North. And we also have an additional 2.5% NSR on, and an additional 70,000 hectares on this belt. So um, lots of uh, lots going on on this belt, which is great. Uh, another group that we have uh, the NSR on, Talisker, is doing lots of good work here as well. And you'll see off to your right of Skunka North is Highland Valley, which is Canada's largest open pit uh, mine. So a very good jurisdiction and a very good location. I'm just going to touch a little bit about the history of this uh, area here on this slide. You'll see the uh, all our four properties again. You'll see Highland Valley there. Uh, pretty pretty obvious there. 
And um, the Fraser River in 1857, there was coarse gold found uh, in the round tier on the Nick, mouth of the Nicomen River, which drew uh, about 20,000 prospectors up the Fraser River. And uh, it's our belief that the load source of this placer mine is coming from somewhere very nearby. And uh, so that's why we're here. And uh, at one point, a little neat part of history here, Yale, which is uh, not so many people there at the moment, but that was the uh, largest town north of San Francisco and west of Chicago back in the uh, late 1850s, 1860s. Start a bit of an interactive uh, verify deck here, as you can see the properties uh, here, Shovel Nose, which I'll be uh, zooming into here, but you can take a look. There's Prospect Valley, Skunka, Skunka North, and, and Merritt here. So uh, just to give you an idea of the lay of the land here. There's our south zone there. This is uh, where we have our maiden resource in and around here. Just to give you see very uh, heavily forested area. There's about 450 kilometers of roads on this property. Uh, we've we've done very little uh, road building and uh, and 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 pad ourselves. It's it's been very heavily forested, which is which is a good thing. And uh, you see our access road there. It's about a 10 minute drive off the Coquihalla Highway. And I'll zoom into our south zone here where the initial discovery was made in late 2018. Uh, whole SN 1814, as mentioned there on the start of the presentation, we followed that up with a 100 meter step out here on SN 1815, 46 meters of nine grams. Then we went over here to 1901, it's about 13 meters of 39 grams per ton gold. And uh, this four kilometer trend, which I'll be touching on here in the next few slides, kind of runs up to the northwest just over this ridge in around here, just to give you guys uh, an idea of what we're what we're looking at here. I'll go into our uh, 3D model of the, the South Zone uh, preliminary resource here. And there you go, there's a look at our uh, 17,000 hectare shovel nose property. You'll see the uh, South Zone preliminary resource right in around here. And as mentioned, that four kilometer long trend runs all the way up here where it remains open um, and all the way up to the Northwest, which remains open to the Northwest as well. And as mentioned, very heavily forested, um, many roads. And in the last uh, couple of years here, we've done a lot of uh, fairly underexplored property uh, besides the area we've been focused on in terms of drilling, but uh, the area remains very underexplored. And uh, we got lots of targets that are gonna be tested this year and namely lots of interesting anomalies showing up along sort of trend down, down towards the Southeast. So more to come on that, which we're, uh, we're very excited about. We'll zoom in uh, closer here to the, uh, the, the pit or the um, preliminary pit design here. And this is uh, um, where we get the 1.1 million ounces there of uh, both indicated and inferred. You'll see vein zone one here in the red and vein zone two in the blue, which now is traced as mentioned there that eight meters of 20 grams is up and around this area, um, which was, uh, well, I'll zoom into some, some other slides, but generally we're getting lower grade, more broad, uh, disseminated gold within these associated halos. So the fact that we hit this high grade intercept here is, is, uh, is, is very exciting and a bit, bit uh, of a surprise to us and it remains open. Uh, it, it just goes to show in these low sulfidation epithermal systems, you can be uh, really close to something and, and it, it takes a lot of drilling and uh, it takes some good sleuthing from our technical team to, to do that as well. I'll zoom in here to give you a better idea of the, how the gold falls out here in this uh, in this south zone. You'll see the in the red is the greater than three grams per ton gold, and the yellow is one to three grams, and uh, the green is 0.35, which is our cutoff up to up to grams. So I'll take off the green here now. You can see just the yellow and red. So any that's everything above a gram there, and then uh, take off to the red there, and that's everything above three grams. And there's a look at, at the, uh, what we're calling vein zone one, but of course we now have vein zone two and a bit of vein zone three uh, carrying on along this Northwest Southeast trend. 
You get our uh, FMN zone around here, which I'll be showing you shortly. And this Franz, which was a high grade outcrop discovered in late 2020 uh, through prospecting, which is pretty rare at this time of, of the project, but there's an outcrop sitting there on surface that had just been missed for, for whatever reason. And uh, we have a big gap here that we're looking to drill as well. But majority of this here is being very, uh, very under drilled. So we're uh, working on that as we speak. There's some intercepts, um, uh, notably a 41, almost 42 meters of eight grams there drilled last year at the South Zone. And there's a look at uh, the FMN hole, almost 16 meters of nine grams and 7.78 uh, meters of 14.84 at the uh, Franz, which is about a kilometer to give you an idea between those two. And this remains open to the Northwest as mentioned. You got some other uh, exploratory areas that we put a few holes out here in Romeo, seeing some uh, a really good suite of pathfinder elements out here in drilling. So we're gonna we'll be following up on that. And we have some new uh, discoveries and outcrop over in this area off to the west as well. And as mentioned, just recently, we've unearthed a whole bunch more along trend down here to the southeast. So the thing is, is certainly growing, uh, not just from drilling up and around here, but um, there's, there's lots of work to be done here and, and very much a drill bit story. Lots of exploration to be done here. Uh, as mentioned, uh, the shovel nose property, two and a half hour drive from Vancouver. 30 minute drive from uh, Merritt. There's the Coquihalla Highway, uh, major power line to the north. We actually have power, uh, smaller power line right, right in, right around our south zone and heavily logged as you can see. And uh, we're working here year round. Uh, we started drilling here at uh, January 15th. So um, yeah, it's, it's a great, great place. And we can't uh, talk about the location advantage enough. It's, uh, it's, it certainly makes us unique in, in our mind. Um, I won't uh, just uh, keep in time and in order here. I won't go too much into this. Um, I talked a little bit about it. Um, I think a key takeaway from this is the 75% of this resource is in the indicated category. And, uh, and it's seven times the uh, cutoff grade is our, our average grade. So it's, uh, it's, it's a, a very good start that we're, we're very happy about. And uh, here's some of the, the other intercepts, as mentioned here, this, this just announced last week, this 3.3 or 3.13 meters of 45 grams within eight meters of 20 grams. Uh, we'll be following that up here in the next week or so. We'll have a drill on there and we're drilling up here at FMN as well, seeing lots of interesting things. So the idea here is, is to really drill a lot more along this trend here uh, while of course exploring the, the, the remainder of this relatively underexplored property. So, uh, and we're hoping to have uh, some sort of resource out of the FMN by year end as well. Uh, a good long section here that gives you an idea of what I was just talking about. South zone here, uh, pit constraint up to there. That's where we're hitting uh, right around there. If you can see the mouse about eight meter, that's where we hit the eight meters at 20 grams. Uh, very little drilling done between uh, south zone to the FMN. No drilling done between the Franz and FMN. We're actually getting some geophysics done here, uh, some DC resistivity, which shows these uh, quartz, the, the quartz veins really show up nicely with this resistivity. So we're, uh, as soon as the snow's um, gone here, we'll be uh, doing a big geophysics program up here to, to help delineate uh, more targets as well, as that seems to work quite well uh, on this property. Uh, zoom in on the Alpine, as mentioned, that that intercept there, which we're, uh, I've been talking about it a bit here, but we're, uh, we're, we're quite excited about this. As mentioned, it was a bit of a surprise where we're seeing these, you know, 265 meters of half gram, which is great too. It's, uh, but to see this uh, intercept here, and not to mention at the bottom of these holes, which we haven't talked a lot about, we also hit three meters of five grams in, in two of these holes. The other one is three meters of four and a half grams. And it's in a, in a completely different um, rock we've seen, not a different rock, but a, we haven't seen mineralization in these types of porphyritic rhyolites. So we're uh, very excited to test deeper there as well. So uh, like I said, we'll be moving there in the next uh, week or so. We'll be having a drill on this uh, to follow up this SNR uh, 2155 intercept. Uh, there it is again. These are all 100 gram meter plus intercepts. And uh, this is the first one we've had outside of the south zone. Well, we had obviously up at the FMN and the France. But besides that, um, just to give you an idea, that's about uh, 500 meters between intercepts of, of 100, 100 gram meter. So we're, we're 
yeah, very, uh, very keen to get back into this area and then you can probably see why. Uh, a bit of a, an arm waving slide here, um, but but it's nice to mention uh, Hishikari, which is which is arguably one of the world's uh, you know best low sulfidation epithermal mines, and uh, just just sort of cheekily superimposed some some of our vein zones onto uh, just to give people a bit of an idea of what we think. And we're not saying we're a Hishikari, but this certainly is going to be. There's more vein zones here. There's more vein swarms. We're seeing them, and uh, it's it's a matter of of getting to them, drilling them, and, and finding them. So, um, as mentioned, very much a drill bit story. And uh, as we're building the uh, Reno resources, we're we're also exploring um, uh, drilling a lot here. Uh, I won't touch too much on our on our management here, as I'm uh, getting close to to the time here. And uh, upcoming catalysts um, drilling, as mentioned, since January, we still have some results trickling in from from late last year due to the labs being a bit bunged up and uh, yeah, constant uh, news coming out in terms of uh, drill results. And as mentioned, following up on that three, uh, three meters of 45 grams, and we'll be uh, ramping up to multiple drills come springtime here. And uh, as mentioned, we'll also be working our, our three other properties and uh, looking to drill Skunka this year as well. So uh, lots on the go. And um, yeah, thank you very much for your, your time today. And thank you to uh, Red Cloud. All right, yeah, thanks for the uh, great presentation, Gareth. Uh, we'll now start with the Q&A portion. So uh, what is West Haven's cost per meter right now? Uh, we're about 230, 240 bucks a meter at the moment. Uh, obviously with, with inflation, I think I mentioned this on, on maybe our last call, uh, everything's going up in price. We were around 200 bucks a meter and, and it's certainly going up, which, uh, which is fairly normal right now, but mm -hmm. still very, very good costs uh, for, for, of course, that's location wise where we are, no helicopters, no planes. And um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's, you know, still one of the lowest costs I've, I've seen, honestly. Yeah. Um, can you provide a bit more detail on how the special drilling tax breaks work? uh drilling tax breaks uh, that's what the question is i don't yeah. i don't know um well well what i will say on that is the mineral exploration tax credit that we receive from the bc government so every every hard dollar we put into the ground on on our projects here in bc we get 20 percent back from the government as incentive then we get an additional 10 percent back because we're technically in the pine beetle kill area um, to, to get people working in those areas. So, so all in all, every hard dollar, we get a 30% uh, back on every hard dollar put in the ground. Okay. Um, a fun question here. What does the FMN stand for? <laughs> Excellent. Uh, it's forget me not. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Is there that, a story that was named that? by, uh, that was named by uh, a geologist before West Haven, um, yeah, uh, they worked for a company called Strongbow, but I think it was back in 2007, perhaps, when it was uh, discovered. Yeah. Okay. And we have time for probably one more. And, you know, is there a single potential catalyst in 2022 that you think the market will, um, will best react to? Or is the news flow mostly going to be drilling results? Yeah, that's that's another good question, and uh, you know we we try we we certainly try not to uh, you know keep our head down and and do what we have control of, and that's find more gold here and and make this bigger and de-risk it. Uh, we got you know lots of environmental baseline stuff going here as well, but in terms of one catalyst, uh, you know we're 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 a little bit baffled at times. We thought our our results last week were great, and uh, maybe we have to follow up on those and prove that this thing extends further to the northwest and and maybe find a few more of these. But uh, yeah, that that would be uh, yeah. Drill results are what, what really drives the market mm -hmm. in our mind, and and of course uh, that and maybe the um, the the addition of uh, you know maybe maybe a, another group getting involved. So yeah, we'll see. Time will tell. Yeah, I mean, you know, based on our conversations, you you're not someone to to overpromise and underdeliver. Um, so maybe, all the maybe best that, for you. Maybe that's our problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all it's all good. We're uh, 
yeah, head down and, and find more gold. And that's our, that's our goal here and, and hopefully unlock uh, shareholder value and, and get this thing going and, and hope, hope for a, a good gold price here. And um, uh, of course, not at the cost of what's going on in the world, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully gold remains uh, solid.